Good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome to our lab tour. Uh, today's guest is Dr. Alma Goldman Baeva. She works in School of Engineering and Digital Sciences at the Department of Chemical and Materials Engineering. Um, the lab is energy storage systems in block C4. And the research that Dr. Menbaeva does is the synthesis and characterization of the advanced materials for batteries and functional composite materials. Welcome. Thank you. So, could you enable me to share my screen? Okay, thanks a lot. Are you able to see it now? Yes. Okay. Okay, good evening everyone. Seems we don't have too big group. So today let me introduce our research lab on advanced materials for energy storage systems. So we are in this group, actually we are a big group and they are mainly located in block C4. Also we have a couple of uh, labs for teaching, also for research in block three. So we will be showing uh, several of them located in block C4. <clears throat> and group is quite big, so mainly the, there are researchers from Nazarbayev University, particularly from uh, chemical engineering department and National Laboratory Astana. Also, we have the startup company, Install Batteries and several projects mainly related to the batteries, fuel cell sensors and different kinds of advanced materials. Okay. So the battery research group actually was established like as one of the first research groups at Nazarbayev University when Professor Shumabai Patkenov was, he joined Nazarbayev University in 2011. Since then, currently the group grown up to around 30 people. So here only a few of them, you know, that due to the pandemic, we have a limited access to the lab and the number of people even doing experiment in the labs are uh, limited, uh, restricted the access. So also you can find all information if you're interested in the research and people, the our publications, and also we organize the international research seminar every year in August usually. So all of this information, if you're interested, can can find in this website. Mm. As I said in the, okay, let introduce me. My name is Alma Kulmin Paeva. I have graduated from Al-Farabi Kazakh National University in Almaty in 2012. Then I have been working for one year in co international company. It was chemical, related to the chemical technology, the polymer materials. And then in 2014, I have joined the Zepaf University as researcher. And in 2017, start to be involved to the teaching as a postdoc. And then last two years, I'm working as an assistant professor in the Department of Chemical and Material Engineering. So you can find all of my contacts here. And also today, our PhD students, Nurbol Tulambek and Nurjan Bekal, they will be helping me to show the equipment and labs. Okay, so as I said, the when you say energy materials, energy storage materials, first thing coming to mind on the, uh, energy store, as energy storage system, it's a lithium ion battery. So in our group, we are doing research on mainly different active and inactive 
um, components of lithium batteries. Also, we synthesize, develop some materials and design for fuel cell, different kind of sensors. So today I will mainly talk about the lithium ion batteries. And in the example of lithium ion batteries, we'll be showing that our equipment and our capability to do a research in this field. So lithium will not go to details. It's a lithium ion battery, it's an electrochemical system which converts electrical chemical energy to electricity. But the, this actually the unique Electrochemical cell looks quite simple, but battery is a quite complex system. The battery itself, actually, the uh, it's the combination, it's a several unit cells uh, as a as a pack to give the desired voltage and current. And the cell itself contains the two active materials, positive electrode and negative electrode. And also for both electrodes, we need the current collector, positive and negative terminal. Also, there is the um, electrolyte. Also, there are a lot of challenges within the, all of these components. Also, there is like, uh, we use the membrane, polymer membrane, the other kind of membranes, and also the packing. So all of these components of the batteries are important to develop to meet the growing demand on the energy of the batteries. Yes? So within the development of the electronics, the power density for the batteries, the demand for this also is growing. So therefore, to uh, increase the capacity and then power density of the battery, all of these components of the battery should be uh, developed, carefully designed, and uh, in our group, we more or less work working all of this. So first, the, in our group, since already, as I said, we have been working in this field for now, like almost 10 years. And currently we are assembling in batteries in two configuration, coin cell configuration and pouch cell configuration. And currently in the lab, we are doing a multi-scale research on each step on the assembly and characterization of the battery. So first we do the synthesis. We have the all, almost all equipment for different kind of synthesis. It might be the high temperature furnaces for uh, solid state synthesis, or wet chemistry, or like polymer synthesis, and guys will show now. And then the, when we develop this kind of materials, it requires a characterization yeah, to analyze the purity structure of the molecules we have synthesized. And also then when we develop some new, let's say chemistry or composite material and then characterize it fully, the, achieve the desired parameters of the uh, chemical, and then we use it to prepare the, uh, on the example of the battery, used to prepare the electrode. For that, we also have all uh, techniques for preparation of the electrode of very small size of several uh, millimeters up to um, several tens of centimeters, thousands of centimeters length. Uh, in different scale, we are able to prepare the electrodes, and then we, as I showed, we, as I showed that we assemble like coin cells and pouch cells. We also have the like lithium ion batteries is should be assembled in the certain condition. We, for that, we use glove box. We'll be showing later. Also, soon we will have the dry room for that, and also there's, there are several equipments we have for those. And then for characterization of the batteries, electrochemical cell developed and uh, prepared, I mean, the kind of ready battery. Then we have the several techniques for the electrochemical analysis of those. Okay, then the, for the batteries, we are working on each component and designing, developing, characterizing, and assembling and testing in order to improve performance, improve the cycle life, to be like battery to make to work as long as possible, and then to bring down the 
cost and also the safety of the batteries and kind of very important issue, right? So here the photo I have put here. So now Nurbol and Nurjan will be helping me to show them. Okay, I will stop the sharing the screen. So how is it possible now for Nurbol? Uh, I think, uh, hello guys, I think you should move to the next uh, page of the Zoom in order to see the video illustration. Can you see? You mean if you are drawing from the phone, yeah? Yes, uh, I'm not sharing the, yeah, the screen. I, I, I'm, I'm just... seeing it quite well, yeah. what I'm drawing. So okay. if other guys confirm the... If anyone has a problem with seeing, let us know. No, it's so fine. Okay, thanks. So okay. we have in C4 building, C4 block, we have five, five actually labs. So we'll be showing three, four of them. The uh, most occupied is equipment, those ones. Yeah, okay, Nurbol, you want to? So let me start uh, by introducing the first lab. It's in C4. Uh, the lab number is 321. In this lab, uh, particularly, we do the preparation of the materials, uh, synthesizing the materials. So as you can see from here, this is the balance, what we use. And this is the ovens where we clean our old dishes and dry them. And so we have the ultrasonic uh, bath where we mix or clean our chemicals or dishes, or we mix the chemicals here. And also the particular, the, so we do electro deposition here. This is the power supply, heat, heating apparatus, and this is the heating as well. And uh, our laboratory is most known for doing the polymer materials uh, elect by electro spinning technique. So we uh, get, we obtain uh, nanofibers by making solution and applying the particular potential. And it's, I cannot open this because someone is working on this. And yeah. also, it applies a very high voltage here. Yeah? And yes, I can show you. Yeah. We use the diluted solution, not diluted, quite viscous solution of polymer and prepare the fibers. It's for very different kind of application, very different composition. But the fiber diameters varies from like several tens of nanometers to microns. So, such a very thin nano structure it like we can control the dimensions in nano scale so thanks to this equipment so if you go and check the recent papers of our group you can find uh, several like advanced materials let's say we have developed for battery use okay well so next is the in here particular aqueous battery people work in this area and if we move to the next is this tool is called spin coating where we use dropping techniques in order to get uh, a, a very thin layer of uh, depositional layers this is the chemicals and solutions that we consumed in order to use in this tool and we have vacuum oven here so we dry our samples in here And this is the chemical storage. Basically, in this lab, we keep organic chemical chemicals in this particular lab. And this is freezers, fridge. And what we have here is the magnetic stirrers. People put their samples on it, as you can see. chemicals, the magnetic stirrers, and we also keep the, our precursors oh. in here. Yeah. Acids here, as you can see. And this is the first laboratory. And the next one, my colleague, Nurjan, will present. Thanks, Nurbol. 
Can you hear my voice? Yes. Uh, so, hello everyone. My name is Najan and I'm a second year PhD student. And <clears throat> I'm going to introduce our second lab and particularly this lab is called our prototyping center. And in this lab, we have several <clears throat> furnaces and low boxes, two low boxes, and also we have ball milling machines and several desiccators. And so let me introduce each of them. So these equipments are called uh, heat, sorry, two furnaces. And as you can see, in this furnace, we have quartz tube and our sample is placed in the middle uh, to this uh, quartz tube and this tube allows constant supply of our required gases. For example, we here use several types of gases, for example, argon or mixture of uh, other types of gases such as hydrogen mixed with argon and such. And as you can see, all of our furnaces are running now and I cannot open them. Then <clears throat> we have two bowling, ball milling machines and, and this particular equipment is used to obtain uh, fine powders and with uh, fine <clears throat> size of microparticles. And also here we have centrifuge and also here our main uh, prototyping center particularly obtained from the obtained powders. Here we are using uh, pestle and mortar and then we cast our sample as a slurry in, onto the our electrode current collectors. And <clears throat> with the use of Dr. Blade, we usually obtain uh, electrode materials with uh, uh, equal surface. Then we have also investigators in order to keep hygroscopic materials. And also we have here vacuum uh, oven in order to uh, dry our electrodes. And then we have punching machines and uh, with the use of these machines, we obtain circular disks of electrodes, for example, like these ones. And then these electrodes are further used to uh, <clears throat> prepare our coin cells. And coin cells are assembled in glow boxes. So here we have two glow boxes. Uh, this glow box also has magnet transpattering in order to obtain very thin films. And this glow box is, ma is mainly used for assembling battery. And inside this glow box, we have also this assembling machine here. Using... Nushan, you can show the screen with uh, like monitoring the condition inside the bubble box. Ah, yes, sure. Here, yeah. as you can see, uh, the condition, so, so we have the amount low. of moisture and uh, oxygen levels below them, one, 0 0.1 parts per million. So yeah. this is the very- The environment inside the glow box yeah. is very inert, pure Inactive. argon. There's no water, very low humidity and very low concentration of oxygen because in, when we assemble lithium batteries, let's say we use the lithium metals and I believe you know that the lithium is one of the most active metals. Yeah, it will react with oxygen and yeah. moisture. Therefore, the batteries are assembled in this kind of inert conditions. For that, we have to use these glow boxes. We cannot assemble batteries on the in the lab in open area. Okay. Yes. Then also we have chemical search and particular in this search we have inorganic chemicals. Yeah. All of the chemicals are uh, introduced, not 
what you just say? Uh, I entered into the, this site and Quartzy, and from this site we can find our chemicals. For example, okay. which chemical belongs to which case, and so on. And then the third lab will be introduced by our colleague, Norbo. Thank you for so, so before moving to the third laboratory, I want to demonstrate to you what our, like, the Institute of Battery that Professor Minbaiba mentioned. This is the products, and this is the, uh, for demonstration, how the, what the battery consists of, as you can see from here. And you can come to our laboratory and see the, the accomplishments that our colleagues have achieved. And I'm going to move to the third lab. This is the third lab where we do could electro. You, could you stop by the CHNS analysis? The analyzer? Yeah. Sorry for interrupting. I just want to introduce that the, we also have in shared facility, also in our lab, the elemental analysis of CHNS machine, where we can very precisely uh, analyze the content of four elements like sulfur carbon, hydrogen, and nitrogen. And for that, if you go to the, under the fuel hood, there is another balance. Could you show that one? Uh, yeah, by side. Yeah, so this balance, if you can see here, uh, if you show the numbers on the screen, yeah, able to like uh, measure the weight, the sample up to like, seventh digit after zero in, in kilograms. I mean the in grams, so like 0 0.1 microgram. And it's very precise and very expensive Swiss tool equipment. I, I believe there are only a few in this university of this equipment, okay. Go on, please, Nabil. So what we do is we measure the, the, the balance our electrode materials and we assemble them. And what we do the next is we put them in the testers. For example, in here, most of people assemble their coin cells. And all the setups are done in here. For example, there are a lot of cells are under the characterization, for example, in here, you can see the information, data. You can see in what capacity of your material is. And also we have several types of electrochemical measurement tools. For example, in here, most of people do is cyclic voltammetry, impedance spectroscopy, and combined electrochemical measurements. And in here, people also do the electrochemical characterization. They put their cells onto these slots and they measure the electrochemical performance. Yeah, so what kind of performance? Why would you do this kind of characterization? So we synthesize the kind of, it might be the new electrode material or with uh, even commercial available electrode material, we do some kind of modification and want to improve the characteristics and then everything like we, as I said, we do synthesis and characterize. Then when we, as guys showed, we assemble prepare the electrodes, assemble batteries, and then you have to see the, the performance of the battery. For example, this equipment Nurbol is showing, it's a, called temperature chamber. It goes down to minus 70 degrees up to several hundred Celsius degrees. So we, uh, for example, in Kazakhstan, we have very cold winter and in some area, in summer, the temperature rises high up, yeah? So we have to test, it's one of the tests we do. We check the performance of the battery at different 
uh, temperature, what kind of characteristics. We check uh, how much electro energy, electrical energy can store the unit of mass of the electrode material. And also we check how many cycles the battery work. We charge, discharge it 100,000 cycles and see uh, how which part of the battery can be stored within the cycles. And also we check the efficiency. So how much energy we give for charging and which amount of that we extract from the cell. And also by this kind of cyclical time analysis, if it's a completely new material or we change the structure, we check the mechanism of the process uh, by cyclical time And when you have all of this data, then we check the other test as did. They also, what else? Uh, so we do the... for different kind of C rate. We check like the capacity of the battery by slow charging and discharging. Also, we do the very fast charging and discharging. And here, the large battery pack. So we have testers for to characterize the cells as as small as the coin cells, as you as you've seen there. And also, we have a couple of battery testers, electrochemical equipment, measuring equipment for the bigger cells and even for the battery pack as shown here. It's a large battery tester and it's a large battery with, uh, if I'm not wrong, 24 volt, yeah? Maybe not, with large capacity and large, it's like, uh, consists of how many, I don't remember, around 20 uh, batteries connected in series and in parallel to increase the capacity and the voltage. So it was for the uh, assembled for application in military purposes. And so currently we are testing it in the lab, not in the field yet. So also we make a pellets. So we also do the solid electrolytes. We obtain na nanopowders and we press them as a pellet, okay. and we also Let's test them. We'll give a short introduction for that, that the conven conventional batteries we are using in the cell phones, laptops, are based on the solid electrode materials and liquid electrolyte. The, there is a conductive media with transferring of the lithium ions. We use the salt solution in solvent, organic solvents. And that's one of the biggest, like, um, problematic part of the battery because this kind of electrolytes are toxic. There are other problems along with this. It's, they are explosive since organic solvents are uh, easily catch a fire. So in this project, Nurbol is showing, we are developing solid electrolytes, particularly here the ceramic materials because some solid materials are also, in, if we design them properly, and make them very thin, they are able to transfer ions as maybe not as good as a liquid, but we we'll try to get close to the performance of the liquid electrolytes. Yeah, so but Nurbol is developing several um, systems, several composite materials for those. Okay. And can... in, in order to synthesize these ceramic materials, we have to have uh, high temperature muffle furnaces. Uh, so the ceramic materials are synthesized uh, above uh, 600 Celsius degree. And in this muffle furnaces, we can obtain up to 1,200 Celsius degree temperature. So it is very high. And we have three of them in this lab. And currently many people are shifting to this field of research. I think it's the end of our lab tour, and thank you for your attention. Uh, I'm giving the speech to the Professor Omagrimit Baeva. Thank you, guys. Yeah, thank you, Nurbol, Nurjan. So, if you have a question, we are ready to explain if there is something not clear and you have some. Okay. Uh, as I said, we are quite big group and we have now around eight funded projects. So there are so many. We are working the like most interesting, like if you're a beginner in the battery research, maybe that the, we are doing 
a kind of new design of the battery. For example, we are developing, okay, with that, let me sh share my screen again, and I want to demonstrate the video. Can you see? Yes. So here we are also developing gel-like polymer electrolyte. I can stop and show it here. So we are developing flexible battery without any liquid in it. So for that, all components like electrodes and electrolytes should be the flexible should have this kind of advanced mechanical properties. So this is it. And also in order to improve the capacity, we are excluding the uh, inactive material as a current collector. So we are developing this kind of mm -hmm, flexible cathode material by using that electro spinning machine, what Nurbol showed in the beginning. So like here it looks like just like fabric, but it can, it's made of the very fine fibros, fibers. And they have they contain the active material we will which will like participate in the redox reaction and produce the energy. And like in this part, we have the electrolyte. And here is the electrode. And then by sandwiching, we assemble the battery here with the electrode material, and then we put the electrolyte on top and second electrode then assemble the battery and here we are demonstrating that this flexible battery is like able to power LED lamp here. It's one unit cell and while you are folding it, so since all components are flexible, it works. And here, I'm cutting it to demonstrate that it contains no any liquid inside. Of course, first of all, so even when we cut the moisture and oxygen enters the cell, but performance is not disturbed, and also it contains no electro liquid electrolyte in it. So as you see here, no no liquid. The, instead of the liquid, we use this kind of gel material, like it's too loud, yeah? So these are the team members who participate in this project. Okay, it's one of the like last achievements, I would say. Here the both electrolyte material, the gel electrolyte and electrode material is made of by using this electro spinning machine, they have this nano structure, nano fibers structure. Okay, any other questions? Yeah, uh, how often do you come up with something new in the laboratory? So, is, is it in like an usual phenomenon to find something new or unique in the laboratory? As a researchers, we all seek for something new and the, our since it's like university, the first goal of us is to educate people. So we are involving a lot of students and young researchers, and we col collaborate with the big universities worldwide. Uh, and we, I mean, what I'm trying to say is that the first outcome is the students and then the papers. So uh, we don't to do something solid, it's not easy in the lab. So we don't do this kind of prototype so often, but we, when we get something new with a novelty, with a good performance, and we try to publish it and then patent it. So soon we are going to apply for the commercialization project. So battery is a quite complex system to develop something new, test it and then bring it to the, let's say, to the market. It's it's not so easy and it, it requires several steps. Even we have assembled this kind of one small cell and uh, kind of proved that it performs well. 
before it goes to the production, there is like pilot scale and different kinds of tests. So it takes several years. And in the, I would say, since we have several people in the lab, maybe I cannot answer this question, how often we come up with some, every day we come up with some new ideas and with some small achievements, but we don't have, so far, we cannot show any product. It's not possible to produce something big within such a short time. When we also involve undergrad students, when some students like show their willing to join us, first we give the task to do the literature search. We have several weekly seminars and they participate the seminars, ask questions, and uh, if we see the, the real interest in it, and then now it's like restricted for undergrad students to come to the lab, but before we like, according to their schedule, we train them in the lab. First, it's like the, for the safety, then how to use the equipment. And then, uh, for example, let me, let me give a real example that for 2020, I have published three papers where the at least second authors were the undergrad students of our department. So I have published three students with undergrad students. So I mean, they worked, some of them worked for one year, some of them for one and a half year. So at least I, uh, in our research field, it requires at least one, two years to come up with a real valuable publication at the end. So the, there was a question like, what kind of tasks can undergrad students perform in your lab? In every level, in each level, synthesis, assembling battery, characterization. It's the begin, of course, the senior researchers will be kind of guiding them. They are looking to how, at how the other people are doing, asking questions. And if we feel that the person is able to do the individual project, undermine or some senior researchers supervise, supervising them, we do, and they also uh, participate in conferences if something we want to get some results we want to present internationally we send students to the international conferences and at the end the papers and there used to be some students who like deal, even lead the groups to assemble their large prototypes or we had like now two or three just this free student projects were done in our group in under supervision of our senior researchers. Do you run experiments or tests for other research team from other departments in case they need the equipment from your lab? Of course, all of this equipment, at least most of those equipment, they belong to university and they are open for whole university. And with the certain equipment is like occupied, like there is a queue, then we make a spread sheet and the, there is the kind of booking system for the equipment. But for like freeze dryer, the other things, it's, which is not very often occupied, even the electrochemical, testing systems, anyone from Nazarbayev University can come and work, but first they have to contact with the responsible people like me, Professor Pakenov, Harelem, there are several of them. Since we have several labs, we have several people responsible for each equipment, for each lab, and it's available for everyone actually. We don't get, get like samples and do this for them, but we give an access to our lab and our equipment because it's everything belongs to the university. One of the presenters talked about website where you can order regions. Do you always take care of region supply yourself or university can do it for you? Okay, it's a very complex, complex question. It's not that Nurjan was showing not the website to order, but we, since we have a lot of chemicals, 
we and a lot of users we have this quartz system where we like put the name of the chemical and the location of it and how much of this we have and when it was bought and just to to monitor and everybody takes the chemicals should bring to that place so it's just not to go through the lab and search for the chemicals you can just go to the website we have like the battery research lab I created the page for our lab and then we can share the access to some people and we for example i have an access to two more labs chemical labs in the university so to share the chemicals but to purchase it's like there are different ways for teaching purpose we do it through the school for the university budget and we also have the projects which is actually for doing research yeah for paying salary for researchers and for buying the chemicals consumables and equipment so the question is yes university both university supply and also we do supply well i mean through our projects funded from internationally we had at least a couple of projects uh, international projects like from european union and we have new projects funded by Nazarbayev University and also by Ministry of Education, Science, Education and Science of Africa. Yeah, the website we mentioned is the online database for our own lab. You can create this kind of like rooms for each database for each lab if you want quartzy you can just type it and check any other questions seems that's it then thanks a lot for your interest for your time you can contact us further I mean, me, if you have some research interest and please check our website for more information and like personal page of researchers. Thanks a lot. Thanks for dedicating your time. And also thanks um, to the people, uh, Merjan and Nurbol, who helped you to guide our lab tour. And thanks a lot for opportunity. Okay, then have a nice weekend and good luck. Thank you. Bye-bye.